Uh, I got her machine. Uh, whatever. Hi, it's Rindane. Remember the other day when you foiled my plans? Well, you finally convinced me that the Eldred threat can no longer be ignored. So I'm destroying Ekinar and all the life it harbors, and perhaps most notably, the Eldred Codex. Do enjoy having your spirit broken, little Eldred. Oh, and tell Deandre that Lothar says, what's up? So there are 25 different characters to choose from, uh, 30 if you have the DLC. Decided to go with Arindi. She's she's a magic user. She's probably the best AoE magic user um, in the game. Someone that I like to play. Uh, voiced by Tiny Tina. Here you get to you, you can predefine um, gear sets. So you see, I have one here set up for Arindi already. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and choose that one. Uh, as you play through the game, you can get various skins and things of that nature. Um, so I'm just going to pick one of those skins. And then uh, you also unlock taunts uh, that you can kind of do uh, as you kind of play through and unlock the character. So I'll go ahead and just pick a taunt. Uh, and then uh, you go ahead and start the game. So, basically, uh, you get challenges um, that are kind of random. Here, I have to get a thousand shards in the next minute or so. Uh, you get shards from you know, enemies that you drop. And you can also see on the mini-map there, those kind of yellow things. Uh, those are kind of large shard deposits. That's one right there. Those right there are spikes, um, kind of where the enemies will spawn. Now, I just gained a level here. Uh, this is like your DNA tree. As you gain levels, you can go ahead and um, uh, do things to augment your abilities. Uh, Orindi, basically all uh, characters have a basic attack. So for Orindi, she can shoot these kind of little chaos orbs, either individually, or you can see all four of them go at the same time for a little bit more powerful attack like that. Uh, she also has uh, two other abilities. Uh, one is uh, uh, kind of a nullify and another is the shadow fire peer, uh, pillar. The shadow fire pillar is uh, her most powerful attack and really the reason why she exists, which is that R1. Uh, but it also has a timer. So you see I did it there. Now I've got a timer of six secons before I can use it again. Um, same thing with the other uh, skill. But as you kind of work through your um, skill tree, you can do stuff to reduce cooldown times and kind of create a synergetic effect, which is uh, uh, pretty cool. Also, you notice that I failed my challenge of getting a thousand shards in the uh, in, in the time allowed. But, uh, it's okay. It's not a. You just get bonus points and stuff like that. I missed there with my shadow fire pillar. The the shadow fire pillar is kind of, you know, you can see here, it kind of creates that circle down on the bottom, and you kind of set it where you want to go. Um, you know, uh, so it, you know, it takes some practice to use, uh, but it's probably the best AOE attack in the game once you get it completely buffed up. You can see you get drops there. That's a speed bump there, so now I can run fast. I'm gonna run over here and uh, get this shard because I need to get shards in order to activate the. Um, the, this this kind of sentry uh, that I'll be uh, using. Uh, you also notice in the bottom right hand corner there's the activate gear. You you know you go into the um, game with up to three pieces of gear. Um, that's an overshield by the way. So now you can see on my shielding down in the bottom left hand corner it's purple. Uh, I've got some extra shielding. Berindi is a kind of a glass cannon. She doesn't have a lot of health or shields. Um, here I'm going to activate, I see 756 to activate that purple thing there that gives me additional shield strength and skill damage. So I went ahead and activated that. 
Uh, the other two are legendaries. They cost a lot more to activate. Uh, but in order to continue through this mission, I've got to uh, activate this sentry, which costs 600 shards. Hey there, stranger! I'm Chronicle, your guide to the nigh-infinite world of Eldred knowledge. Welcome to the Grove of the Arcanum! Apologies, it is presently engulfed in flames. Chronicle, it's Milka. I need some help getting at the Grove. Hey, little lady, welcome back to the Grove of the Arcano. First things first, you have eight books overdue. You've got a week before I send the guards. Item number two, holy sh**, the Grove is on fire! Oh, set myself on fire, whoops. Locked! This is not supposed to be locked! Out of my way, George, the Grove's on fire! You'll notice that I have a middle option there. Those are mutations that you can gain access to as you rank up a particular character. Why not transfer the data wirelessly? There's just too much of it to ensure stable transmission. Here, take a look for yourself. This is the manifest the observatory sent along. Those were my bones, you nitwit! I need those! Probably! The Codex is in everything they've learned about every species, civilization, and star they've encountered. So, you know... So basically, I have to data. defend uh, the Chronicle Sentry. Yeah. I'm kind of skipping through a little bit. Damn you! This is a library! And I mean... <laughs> so this one's great encore allows me to immediately cast a shadow fire pillar for half strength right after I cast one so now you'll see me casting two right in a row one up oh, I didn't cast it uh, uh, so but for a few seconds you can cast the second one um, again I'm kind of rusty it's been a while since I've <laughs> since I played this but uh, I'll be doing that a lot you'll see me casting two right in a row the second one will be less powerful uh, then, or half, half damage. And I fell for my challenge because I didn't kill the second guy there. Whoops. Still not taking advantage of second casting my second shadow fire uh, pillar. I really am rusty. Yeah. A little bit later in the level I realized that I'm not playing it properly. Now at level five, every character right here unlocks their ultimate ability, which is now you can see that triangle. That one has a really large uh, cooldown, but you'll see me casting it. Uh, there. Yo, I'm going to pick Chaos there to reduce uh, uh, cooldown time. So here's my ultimate attack. I told you to leave me and alone. unlike the Shadow of Fire Pillar, you. which is harder to aim, that one you just kind of face and shoot. So it's really kind of nice. It doesn't have the huge uh, range um, Eric effect, that's not really wide, but it's still a lot easier to land a hit. There we go. There's my second uh, uh, pillar there. Now I'm going to start using it uh, going forward. You can see there there's boxes that you can open to give you boost, speed boosts and overshield boosts and coins and various other things. more gear. I've got a thousand shards um, and my challenge is to uh, set up some turrets. I won't. I, I will be failing this challenge too. Now you're going to see a really large chest. There are usually three of these scattered throughout. That's a double helix. It's going to give me automatic level up if you select it. There's about three of those per level 
Um, there's spots that there's that they can be, but they're kind of random. So there's like seven spots in this particular mission where they could be, and you know, in those spots, three of them, you know, they'll actually they'll actually be there in three spots. So you kind of want to check. You know, you need to learn like the locations of where those things are. So, um, so you can see there that turret costs 400 uh, shards. So I can I'm gonna go ahead and activate it. And you can create kind of what turrets you want. I should have done a thumper turret. I selected stinger, but thumper would have been better. But now, of course, because I built that uh, turret, I have less shards. So that means I can't activate my um, one of my pieces of gear. Um, so you always kind of kind of want to manage your your shards. Like you know, do you use it for building turrets? Do you use it for you know activating your um, various gear? You know, if you use it for other kind of in-game things, I had to use it for that century um, earlier. So you just have to kind of decide how you're going to manage your shard resources. And in this particular level, I actually do a pretty poor job of getting those large shard deposits. Um, so, I mean, uh, again, I'm kind of rusty when I play this level, or this particular mission. Dumping all the data into some, uh, data minion thingies. Here they go! Get them safely to Chronicle! So I gotta escort these guys over to where that Chronicle is. And I've gotta get 20 of them over. And, uh, this picker mission is interesting because it's one of the best missions in the game just to kind of try out new abilities and stuff because uh, the level won't end, the enemies won't stop coming until you escort all 20 of them, which means that you can deliberately kind of let them get killed and then kind of rank yourself up and, you know, try out, you know, various new skills from, from uh, characters, especially ones that you're not super familiar with. And a lot about a lot of this game is about you know finding characters that you like and then trying with different helix options and upgrades to find you know your play styles that work well for you that are a lot of fun. You can see there that they're trying to destroy my turret, um, which they will do um, after a while. Uh, anyway, I'm I kind of like go around for a while and. Uh, Kind of level up and things of that nature. And so I, I think we're going to be skipping through data that data is so uh, a little bit. So it's just kind of fun, you know. You've got all these guys that that are spawning, and you can just kind of get in there and start uh, you know, using your skills and gaining, you know, your your in-game XP to level up. So you can see right now I'm currently level seven. Uh, So my my other skill, that's not my Shadow Fire one. Um, basically, it's gonna re restart up my Shadow Fire pillar. Um, it reduces the cooldown to zero. So kind of the gaming loop for this character is doing the Shadow Fire pillar, then the second, then doing that second skill, which is now two seconds, which then, which then refreshes my Shadow Fire, so then I can do it again. So that's why you're able to see me cast like four of these Shadow Fire pillars all within a very, very short period of time. So that's kind of the combat loop for this particular character. So the shadow fire the pillar, and then another pillar, and then I reduce the cooldown and then do two more. Now you can see all my stuff is uh, now on cooldown, so time for me to run away. <clears throat> Anywho, um, I'm kind of just es escorting these guys out. Again, just kind of doing some more fighting. Now is the time to scream! So you, can, you can just kind of see what the, this particular character's fighting is. There's a lot of different characters, and there's, you know, tr traditional gun type characters. There's, you know, um, defensive type characters. There's, uh, just, you yeah, know, a lot of different type of, um, melee characters. A lot of different uh, ways to play this particular game depending on the, the character that you 
choose and then again how you break them up. So I just got my last piece of gear. I'm level 9 at the moment. And, uh, now I'm starting to play really. I'm getting, I'm letting these couriers go now. So I'm just working towards uh, actually beating this uh, level. Uh, and then at the end of each level, you always have to fight a, a main boss uh, guy. So basically, that, I'm going to kind of skip over to uh, the boss. More data safely on board. Codex data secure. All right, one more piece of history safely ensconced inside of me. But, you know, you can go and kind of spend your shards, to, you know, to set up these turrets that would then help protect uh, your your little data minions and stuff. Again, it's all kind of how you want to spend your resources and things of that nature. The, the shards are not shared in co-op, so again, when you're playing with uh, with friends, you know, you kind of have to uh, you know, balance out, you know, who's going to get what and try to communicate. You know, sometimes it's really important for a particular character to get a particular uh, piece of gear because um, it really helps out their character or, or whatever the case may be. So you just kind of, again, you it's co-op, so you kind of work together to do what's going to be fast. Same thing for sharing those level ups. Um, you know, who's going to get the level ups? You know, how are you going to to share and all that kind of stuff? So it's you know, it's cooperative as it should be. Okay, uh, I think I'll be uh, skipping over to kind of the boss fight here in just a second. <clears throat> Data minion secure. All right, I think we're almost done. So, um, but yeah, anyway, uh, kind of sort of how the combat looks uh, for this game, at least for her. Okay, so here we go. So he's kind of invulnerable right now, so you have to use those turrets, which will then drop his shields. That will then move him to another spot where you can actually do damage to him. And in the meantime, you have to protect the turrets. But he's vulnerable now. Let's do some damage. So it's kind of all about kind of activating, um, getting, picking up shards, activating the turrets, protecting the turrets from being destroyed, and then reactivating them, and then when he's available, killing them. So then I think I'm going to skip over. Because uh, at some point, um, his shield's down permanently, and then you can just kind of fight him for the last about half of his health or so. <laughs> and then the recording stopped right as I hit, right as I was killing him. So, um, I'm gonna miss a little bit of that. And then afterwards, you get a uh, kind of a, an accounting of how you did on the level. So, after we beat him, I'll like, go through that very briefly. I randomly picked this level. I just thought it was just a, it's a pretty fun one. 
uh, to do, but there are, I don't know, um, eight or nine different full levels like this, and then also operations, which are also really cool. Obviously I won, and here's the end of the mission. Crew and cargo safely aboard, Captain. We're ready to go. You heard him, Nova. Get us the hell out of here. Well, that's a depressing as hell sight. Who wants to drink now? We did the job, and most of the civilians made it out okay. I'd call that a win. It's a pretty bad score. Not very good. Uh, based on your score, you kind of get up a ranking of uh, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. So, got bronze there. So my best is a little bit double that. And then um, I got gear. So I got a platinum, I'm sorry, a gold item, a purple item, and a blue item um, for doing it. And then I got some points for my specifically for my character and then also kind of overall command ranking, which also gives you stuff. And then money that I can use to spend on things. Tells you my XP, you know, how much money I got, difficulty. And then these are challenges that give you various things. You can see I'm pretty close to giving, getting pickups, leveling up from pickups. Anyway, I'm you know pretty close on a lot of these things. And this is kind of like for you know your overall you know gameplay, very much like badass um, ranks for your profile. And then you know there's my score, my kills, how many times I died, shards I picked up, how many times I was uh, revived. There was actually more information there I should have gone through. It, can, it shows you all sorts of information. And then you can see all my damage basically came from the pillar damage. <clears throat> 134,000 from that. And again, kind of go back. I should have gone back through uh, my stats a little bit more.